hi hopefully all of you are doing good now from this video onwards we will continue our journey to the splunk ui toolkit so if you remember previously we worked on couple of videos where we discussed about what splunk ui toolkit is and we basically created a simple component and also we have seen how to spin up a local web server to see the component and whatever changes you are doing it just to uh, develop the component over there right and while doing that we created this this to do list component as well now in this particular video we will try to see how to create a splunk app using the splunk ui toolkit as well as in the app we will be creating lot of pages where um, we will be using the complete react framework splunk provides um, using the splunk ui toolkit as well as we will try to also see like how to um, basically use the other react framework as well uh, while developing this app so what i am thinking is probably we can build an app end to end app uh, one by one in one by one pages and then we will see it so probably we can we can see it uh, we can develop a deep learning app which will have all the details let's say related to how to train a model how to use a particular model those kind of stuff right small small knowledge on deep learning we will build the app as well and we will build the knowledge about the deep learning as well using using this one so hopefully it will be a good exercise to do it so as a first step what we will do is first today is we will see how to use this splunk ui toolkit to create a new splunk application so what i have done it over here is under my d, d, d drive i have created a folder called splunk ui toolkit apps you can create any folder of your choice okay now first i will go to this particular folder so from the command prompt first we will go to that particular directory here right we will go to that particular directory so we have to go to d and then as we have discussed before right while while creating this this new component so you we uses this splunk create to initialize that monorepo over here right so we will be doing the same stuff over here as well using this npx at the red splunk create right so if you see it is saying that this particular directory does not look like a monorepo so it will initialize it now previously while creating the react component we selected this one so to create the react app with a react component i will be selecting the second one over here now it will ask you for the name of the component we will just give the name called so let's say we will start with a file uploader where we will upload some files and we will be using some kind of uh machine learning algorithm to classify that particular image okay so let's give the component name over here called file uploader okay file uploader component now it will ask you for the repository name so i'll just say Plunk deep learning app repo. Okay, so I'll give the repository name like that. Now, if you see, it is asking for the name of the app. So I'll give Splunk deep learning app YouTube. Okay, so this is the app we will be creating it over there now if you see it has initialized the particular repository if i just go over here it created a folder called packages now under this packages folder it created two things one is this file uploader which is nothing but our file uploader component but it initializes with the same component we have seen it before as well right while working on this creating the new component it just create this a simple basic component over here where you can click in uh, click it 
click on this particular click here button and it will just update the counter over there right so it will be same over here we will work on we will work on it to change it to a five dollar product in the at the latter stage now let's go back and here it also created our deep learning app over here as well right with all this source and everything over here so let us do one thing let us take this particular folder into our visual studio code so we have imported the splunk ui toolkit apps into our visual studio code as i was saying like inside the package we will be able to see the file uploader and your splunk app component over here right now this is this is the first step where we uses the npx that splunk create to initialize the monorepo over here which created an app and a component over here now second step is to we need to install all the dependencies over here right so if we, if i see the there are three package dot json file over here at at that root level where it will be applicable for the whole project over here this is the one right and another one you will find at that component level this package dot json another one you will find at the splunk app level over here right so so if i just see the package dot json at the at the whole package level whole, whole project level right so there is a thing called setup so we will run this one now okay to install all the dependencies over here so i'll say yarn set so it will basically run this command if you see it the same command we are we are seeing it over here right so let us let us install all the dependent packages then we will come back okay as you can see like um, the already dependent packages has been installed and if you see it it created this node modules package as well over here right now we have installed the dependent packages now the second most important thing is if i just go back to the documentation it will be more clear so i'll just click on over here so the first thing is we have to create the we have done it using the yarn setup okay you can use this one as well yarn install as well and then yarn run build as well so both of the things we have done it using the same command called yarn setup okay now we have to link the app now why it is important because if you remember when we created the component we did not use need to use this link app because it was spinning a its own server there right so that we can easily debug and develop the component independently uh, from a splunk app but in this particular scenario we are basically trying to create a splunk app right and a splunk app requires an a splunk environment to run it right so that's why this yarn run link app is required over here so if i just go to the app we have created this is our app right and if i just see the package.json so there is a link app command over here right so this is the second most thing so what it will do is when it will when we will run this one right it will create a stage folder over here which is nothing but a splunk app okay the the packaged splunk app and it will create a sim link inside our splunk etc apps folder to this particular stage app so that is what it will do so that when whenever we will access that from splunk right ultimately we are basically accessing the stage app folder i, I will show you how, how it will look like so let's run this so to run this one to find this linked app we need to go, go inside this particular deep learning app over here right so let's go over there so we'll go to cd packages then splunk deep learning app right so this is our app now inside the app we will run this one yarn run link app okay so if you see what it will do is it basically created a sim link for this is my splunk path right with this path 
if you see there is a stage path it has created inside our package deep learning app stage folder right now to to for for this command to work first thing you have to do is you need to set your splunk home so if you go to environment variable if you go to environment variables right and you need to make sure you have set this particular splunk home otherwise this command will not work at all okay now once it has done that now once the linking is done right so now we have to run this particular command called yarn run start right so that the webpack the behind the scene this webpack module will start watching the changes we will be doing it for the component as well as in the splunk app so that it will be automatically reflected in the splunk screen as well to do that one this command needs to be run from needs to be run from the main project root folder okay that means from the splunk ui toolkit apps where we have all these folders over here right from from here not inside the app over here okay that you need to remember here so if i just run this guy over here now yarn run start if you see like it is started watching the changes for the file uploader started watching the changes for our splunk deep learning app as well right and as the sim link has been created now if i go back to my splunk and restart the splunk so what it will do it should identify the stage app so let me do that i'll go to settings server controls then restart splunk okay now in the meantime while splunk is getting restarted let us see what it has done so this is our stage app if you see inside our splunk deep learning app youtube so it has created a stage app over here right so which is nothing but a splunk app if you see it it has this app server folder then default folder where we have the app.conf splunk create.conf it has a readme folder just like a basic splunk app structure over here right so our splunk whatever local splunk we have it over here right because there is a sim link between the etc apps folder to this stage folder so splunk will try to use this information to render that one because in the app server there is a there is a start.js file so so when we ran that particular yarn start after the yarn link right so it has done all the tricks over here so let us wait for splunk restart to be completed then we will see what's going on there okay our splunk has been restarted now let us try to log in and try to see what what magic happens there so if i go to the splunk home page right so over there at the at the left hand side if you see this is our splunk deep learning youtube app right so if i just click on over here so if you see it has a start page and it is showing these things over here hello from inside the splunk deep learning youtube now from where it is coming up if i just see the code for the splunk deep learning youtube app so all the codes are there in the source folder right as we have discussed it before now in the web app there is an index dot js web app pages start right so this is where it is coming up hello from inside the splunk deep learning youtube app your component will appear below and it has basically called this particular component over here file uploader over here right so which is basically if i just see the file uploader code which is the same code we have seen it before as well file uploader jsx right which basically have a have this this button and and this particular card over here right and if i just click on it it will just keep the state of the button over here how many times i have clicked it over here right and if you see it like this is a very handy feature and and if i go back to my splunk etc apps folder now okay so let us see that splunk etc if i just go back to the apps folder right if you would see for the splunk deep learning app youtube this one i was working on this is my 
my code base so this is the one currently we are working on right so it is a, it, it's a sim link over here right and if i just double click on it so it should go to our app server default whatever stage folder we have seen it over here inside this particular stage folder inside the Splunk deep learning youtube app here right and and if you see if i just do some more changes here it should be reflecting when i will be refreshing the page over here as well but for that to work there are a couple of things you need to understand okay i'll, I'll just go back over here to etc system local folder because splunk always cache the the js changes over there right so there is a web.conf file and if i just open it so you need to set these two things to zero cache entries limit and cache bytes limit to zero so that splunk will not keep any cache now if i just if i just make a change over here let's say in the in the app over here youtube one i'll just give okay and if i just refresh it here it should show the youtube one over here if you see it okay now if this is also not works for you so there is a browser cache over here as well that you need to if i just press f12 on the on the console so there is a disable cache over here right you need to keep it open uh, you can open it in a, in a new new window as well but this thing also you need to check it over here so that it will not keep the browser cache it will not keep the splunk cache as well so that whenever you do some code changes here in your in your jsx file it will be automatically reflected in the in the in splunk as well so that you can easily develop your app components and pages easily right so this is very much handy when you want to develop a very new and basically like the options are unlimited over here right because it, it's a react you are inside the react framework now so you can use any react supported package in your app now be it like a new visualizations or any kind of cool react packages like the react flow right which basically creates a flow charts so those type of things are now you can easily easily build in inside a splunk app now right so this is a very interesting one so we will going forward we will try to make this particular deep learning youtube app more useful in terms of different deep learning concepts i will try my best to incorporate different things over here and and if you if you at any stage if you feel like the the code changes or codes i am using because because i may not be react specialist so if you find anything which can be improved just let me know through comments so that i can improve it from the next video onwards as well okay so hopefully this video was helpful see you in the next video